It's been a while since I've been on here. I, uh, yesterday, um, I went to go see the highly anticipated, highly talked about, deserved to, deserved to be so uh, awesome, fantastic, dope. Hands down, one of the better movies I've seen this year for sure, even though it just started 2016, 2017, rather. Um, Logan. You know what I mean? I was highly, highly, uh, I had high expectations, man. Logan, Wolverine, um, is probably one of my favorite characters uh, from the X-Men, you know, uh, series, genre, comics, whatever you want to say. Um, I thought it was a really good movie. I thought it was done really well. Uh, Hugh Jackson, man, has off, bro. You killed it. Um, the movie, let me just go right into it. The movie, I'm just going to 1 to 10, was a, a 10. I don't get tens, but it was a ten. I want to give it a nine and a half just cause, but the only reason why I would get a nine and a half because it wasn't a focal point on just blood and guts. And yes, it was rated R. Yes, it was about Wolverine finally get to stab somebody through a scrum through a skull, or finally see Wolverine actually rip somebody's face off with his claws. Like we never get to see somebody actually have his arm ripped off by Wolverine. Like arm is cut off. You know what I'm saying? So seeing stuff like that was dope. Uh, the little girl was phenomenal, man. Uh, uh, Hugh Jackman was phenomenal. Um, even the guy that played the um, he played the uh, the guy that contracts mutants. Um, I can't think of what his name is at the moment, but he was even awesome. I want to put a picture up right here or right here, something like that. But um, yeah, man, the movie was good. Uh, I want to say that Professor X did his thing. He was like I, the way the trailers was kind of set up. It was like he was supposed to be like this scene out old man, or like he was. Going through it. I mean, he is going through some ish. He is kind of dying. You know what I'm saying? He is kind of losing his grasp on controlling his powers and stuff like that. Um, but the movie kind of centered around Logan, who is basically at this point, he's always been alone and always about being doing his own thing. But it shows that Logan still believes so much of Professor X and believes so much of what Professor X stood for that he is basically waiting for him to die. He's sitting here going through the motion of basically being his caretaker, giving him his meds, going out, hustling, getting his money up. With the end result goal being to get a boat and they sell off into the ocean. He can't affect anybody. They go in the middle of the sea somewhere where hopefully his powers can't reach out and leave nobody else while he dies. Um, Logan's whole thing, which we don't get to to about 50% of the movie, is he has an um, animatium bullet, which he plans on using to shoot himself in the head. And basically, in his life, once Professor X is dead, because he feels like he has nothing to live for. Now, with that being said, the whole entire movie he also, which kind of explains how. Wolverine is coming to his end. He's like, basically, he's limping through the movie. He has like a, a bad bum leg, a bum knee, back hurting. Scars are not healing. So you're basically seeing him. There's even a part of it where he is drags his claws and one of the claws don't come out. Right? So as I'm watching, I'm like, dude, this dude got like cancer or like the clap eight? I don't know what he got. You know what I'm saying? Like what's going on? What's killing him? But it turns out that the animanium, which is inside of his body, is basically starting to poison him. Because he's getting older and his powers can't rejuvenate or recover as fast enough, um, it's basically taken away from his body and breaking him down. Now, if you go back to the comic book series, which I'll put a picture up right here, or I'll put it up right here. <laughs> basically, uh, they do talk about how when they finally remove the animanium from Wolverine, he actually gets better healing powers, right? So if you're a comic book fan and you know and you followed it, you know that in the comic book, they actually, as one point or one storyline where they remove his animating completely from his body and his healing powers like are instantaneous. Like, dude gets shot up and stabbed 50 times and heals instantaneous on the spot. So it does make sense that they're following that. Um, they're also trying to hang close to like the comic book, which was Old Man Logan, which would be a picture here, where basically uh, Old Man Logan is this guy who just basically does his clinic school thing and like sells off and still winning. It's like this long ranger, I'm off, I'm out type deal. You know what I'm saying? You follow the comic books, you also know that Captain America went to Logan and said, yo, help me win this battle. And he was like, man, forget you and Iron Man about that Civil War-ish. I'm out. He was always a loner, and this kind of movie kind of depicts that perfectly. Right. All right, so going through the facts, right? Let me just sum up, like, the important stuff. So you got a couple stars in there, right? You got um, <clears throat> uh, Boyd Holbach, which is this guy right here. Boyd Hallbach. Um, he's a pretty good guy. 
Uh, he plays the role perfectly. He plays this dude named Donald Pierce, got this robotic arm, part of this little militant crew that go through and they're basically chasing Logan and the chick the whole entire movie. And, you know, obviously you got Patrick Stewart, Professor X, stand up. You got uh, Hugh Jackman, obviously, Wolverine. And then um, <clears throat> you have uh, uh, Daphne Keene is her right here. She plays a little girl who, like, I thought she couldn't speak, like, for the first 20 minutes of the movie. And then she, like, says something in Spanish. And I'm like, bitch, what the fuck? And Hugh Jackson is like, bitch, what the fuck? All this time your ass can speak? So, you know, she go off in that, uh, that spanish -ish. I used to have a Mexican girlfriend. Had some couple of Latino chicks, actually. But when they go off on that spanish -ish and you don't know what they're talking about, you have this little ring, but like, man, just shut that ish up. She go, I'm like, hey, man, calm that shit down. But it's funny because she does pick up some uh, dialect. She does know some English, but it's just funny that she goes like the first like 30% of the movie without saying anything. And you're like, oh, this shit just don't talk. But she really, in fact, does. So it's pretty cool, man. Um, and then the last guy you have is um, Stephen, or I'm sorry, Stephen Merchant. Uh, and what is this guy's name? I told you I was going to find it for you. Um, but this guy, uh, Caliban, this guy. He plays Caliban, who was a tracker, who was also in another X-Men movie. Caliban plays an important part because he basically is the one that the whole entire movie, when this shit's going on, he is leading these um, merchants, merchants, mercenaries that's trying to pop Wolverine and a little chick the whole entire time until he gets fed up with it, destroys himself with a bomb, kaboom, no more Caliban, it's got real. That's how it went. But uh, again, uh, all the, the few mutants that was in it, was was and, and that's another interesting take on it, right? So like the whole movie I'm like, all right, so what like drops are y'all gonna give up for, for mutants? Like what new mutants are we gonna see? Do we get to see Jubilee? We get to see Gambit, we get to see uh any like the regular like X-Men, you know. I mean you could have brought back Nightcrawler, just anybody that might have been hanging around, and all they do is live little cliff notes like hell at this point there's no pretty much no mutants left. Uh the doctor cat I was telling you about basically determining something and design something to kind of suppress the mutant uh genome or the mutant genetics, whatever the case may be. Ain't no more mutants being born. And they mentioned the movie's been 25 years since the last mutant was born. So you would think other mutants get together, do their thing, boom, pop out a new mutant. But the issue ain't happening. What they did was they started juicing stuff into the food, right? Which they're probably doing right now. If you think about it, like all these fake food and this artificial corn syrup and this BS issue we be eating in our bodies that ain't natural. It's probably some of the same type deal. Like, you don't know what they're giving us, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, why cancer rates keep going up as it's going down? You know what I'm saying? But that's another conversation. Um, but yeah, like it's it's just crazy. Like, why is the the health rate? Like, why are people back in the day my great grandma lived she was like 70? My great granddaddy like 80, 90 years old. Now cats getting popped at 60, 50, 70 years old, because all this fake nonsense that we eat is killing our bodies. But another story for another Kyle podcast, uh video, or whatever. So um yeah, man. So the, the movie is fanatic, man, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, I want to go see it again. I will, I will watch the movie and then sit there and watch it again. That's how good it really was. Um, you go through um, X-Men. I'm sorry. Wolverine is with Professor X. They talking. Da -da -da -da. You see he's a caretaker. Girl gets involved into a chick. Found Wolverine like, yo, I got, your, I got this girl you need to get in contact with. You need to help her. He's like, man, I ain't about that life. Keep it pushing. I'm trying to do what I got to do. He basically gets forced to take this girl on, and then he finds out that she has basically been cloned for his DNA, a.k.a. that's his daughter, right? He tries to deny it, like, yo, I'm not about that life. Professor X, crazy, un, un, I never saw it coming, but Professor X gets killed by Wolverine, right? Shit, I was like, damn, damn, son. And they kind of make a... Um, I, what's crazy about the movie that makes it so good, there's a part in the movie where Wolverine is talking to Professor X and he's like, you didn't know who I was. Or you didn't see me. You didn't know it was me. And Professor X was like, I always see you and I always can know, I always can see you, but I never know if it's you. Right? Because he's like, who are you? Right? He's like, you're scared for a minute. And he's like, I always can see you and I always can look at your face and see your face, but I never know if it's you. And he's like, what, the, what did that mean? That's like some weird Jedi mind trick shit. Like, what are you talking about? However, in the movie, he gets killed by Wolverine while he's sleeping, right? You watching like, what are you doing? 
Wolverine then kills the family that helps out them and, and all this stuff. But then you realize that Wolverine comes into the picture, the real Logan. And actually, the Wolverine that killed Professor X is a clone, another dummy clone of Logan or Wolverine, right? So you then got Logan versus Logan. Old man Logan versus freaky ass, futuristic, I don't got no emotion or say so, hyped up on Mountain Dew Logan, right? So the dude like doing all this crazy, like da 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 da, da. like and that's him stabbing him about 50 times and Logan just taking it, can't heal, right? You know what I'm saying? Dude, lungs collapsing, dude, guts is gushing out there in the truck. He leaking, he like, I gotta go to sleep. He driving, passed out. It's crazy, you know what I'm saying? But long story short, in the comic book, which is featured right here, you'll see that there was a robotic Logan or a cyborg Logan that was actually made and Logan had to initially kill him because you all know that Wolverine is a beast anyway besides the hawk and so you know what i'm saying he ended up taking them out and then that's all out that jazz happened so they actually kind of dubbed and it brought back like this animating uh this uh robotic or this cyborg wolverine and put him into the movie and made it kind of dope i ain't no lie seeing wolverine fight wolverine you like damn and like he is like like he and he's i ain't got claws I, my editing ain't that dope, so I can't even make fake claws. But he like doing some some joints, and you like, good grief, Charlie Brown! I'm like, what is you doing? He goes at it with him. You know what I'm saying? I wish I had the fight scenes right here, but it ain't on YouTube yet, so I can't do that woozy download ish. But if it was one, I put some kind of fight scene. It might be like a comic clip or something right here, but I can't get that live action joint. But yeah, man, it was dope, man. So uh, that was a good scene, man. So like the cinematography was good. The director was good. The producer was good. And like the movie, it's like you're not disappointed with the lack of action in it because they, they sprinkle it in like you're doing season of salt at the perfect time, right? So sometimes it's like it's not needed. Sometimes it is. But let me, I don't want to bore y'all, man. The movie was phenomenal. Uh, fast forward, Professor X dies. Wolverine kills the robotic one. Um... They try to make it, what the goal of the movie is, is basically we Ranger decide, I'm going to help with this chick gets to the border, right? She gets to the border, which is in North Dakota somewhere, going towards Canada. Um, the goal is from the escape to Canada and try to get refuge, right? Supposedly at this time, which is 2029, mutants are not welcome. So these 25, these 12, 10, 12 mutants, which is all kids, which I'm sorry, my bad. The chick ends up making it to North Dakota where she teams up with the mutants that was also part of this project that was basically clones of other music collected. So, like, they dropped little Easter, Easter eggs like, yo, everybody from, like, the uh, Weapon X project, all the mutants that kind of came, came in contact with Striker and all that shit had DNA extracted from them. They even showed the doctor dude saying, let me get some of this um, DNA from Caliban because we're going to use it for the new mutants. So they cloning these motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? Cloning the mutants now. What they're doing is they want to genetically pick an engineer mutant as opposed to having them come out naturally in birth. Boom. So, fast forward, man. Keep going. Keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. Um, stay with me. So, we uh, we get to the point where um, Wolverine is, is he beat up, man. He, he, he about to pass out. He got the clock out. It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he got this super sauce, right? It's like Mountain Dew times 10. Take Mountain Dew and Monster, Red Bull, shake them joints up, add a little bit of crack, you get this special serum, right? And basically make mutants, you know what I'm saying, uh, reheal faster, get better, stronger, blah, 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 blah. And Jack said, dude goes crazy. You're going to see him in the trailer. He started going like the, uh, and, uh, 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 uh. and basically doing it because he wants to try to save them. He knows that the mercenaries are going to round up the kids, specifically his clone slash daughter. Dude basically dies saving them. So it's kind of full circle. You see Wolverine goes to the point where he was a loner and gets discovered by Weapon X. I'm sorry, gets discovered by Weapon X, becomes Wolverine with the animating claws, which causes him to basically end up dying. However, in that time play, he meets Professor X, learns, gets a family, goes back in time, blah, 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 all that boring stuff, but gets closer to the family, gets a purpose in life, and then Joe's on the other end. And then he goes back into it, ends up wanting to be alone and not be dealing with nobody. He hates life, wants to kill himself, and then realizes he has purpose in life. Side note, the bullies will usually kill herself. The chick was so dope, she ended up taking a bullet from Logan while he was passed out, bleeding to death. Kept it in her pocket, used that to kill the Wolverine that was trying to keep the which was the clone to kill Logan. So Logan ain't even taking Wolverine. I stand corrected. The chick took out Wolverine by shooting him. When I say the chick, his daughter, shot him in the head with the bullet that was meant for Wolverine. So it was kind of like this whole like play on um what is it, coincidence or what that shit, what is it? What's that shit called? When you be like irony or whatever the case may be, sprinkle that on top. You know what I'm saying? And then um, uh, you get uh the shit killing Wolverine and all that good stuff, man. So 
Uh, I'm sure I got clips and stuff playing in the background. I'm trying to throw up pictures and stuff like that. Please read the captions and listen to what I'm saying. But it was phenomenal, man. Uh, Logan dies. So he dies trying to save her. You know what I'm saying? And it made me kind of get touched. Like I ain't got, I ain't had my daddy and stuff like that all the time when I was growing up. And he wasn't the, the best role model and blah, blah, blah. But I was like, that's what Logan was. He was like just trying to do what he could. Dude basically said, like, when he's down, like, man, this what it feels like to have a family. You know what I'm saying? He's like, damn, that shit touching. Like, even if your dad wasn't there, and he just probably, he just tried. You'd be like, man, I feel for you, bro. I feel for you. But you never see Wolverine like a, uh, aside from loving Jean Grey, who I wanted to bang my damn self, but she was sexy. But you never see Wolverine, like, emotional, aside from Jean Grey. Like, I can't think of no other person where he, he kind of got kind of water ride when Scott actually died. But I think he was still kind of happy. You know what I'm saying? But when he had to kill Jean Grey, that boy was sad, man. So I feel like uh, seeing him Wolverine in his light was just a different type deal. And I respect Hugh Jackman so much because he controlled completely how this movie came out and how he wanted to be depicted. It's not often you see cats come back and they do that, i.e. like Batman these characters that came back for these Spider movies. What's the name from Spider-Man? Toby McGuire from Sp uh, Spider-Man. Like, sometimes they don't come back with a good one, man. So it was good to see him come back and do this. And he been on it for, what, 17 years, man? I was in high school when this movie came out. I was a kid, man. I couldn't even vote by nothing. I was a kid. I couldn't, I don't, I don't know if I can drive. So it was a phenomenal movie. I respect and salute Hugh Jackman for this. Um, yeah, go see it. If you ain't see it, you sleep it on life. <coughs> um, 10 out of 10 throw up all these clips in if you gotta watch <coughs> thanks for watching <coughs> I'm about to do my favorite activity once I can breathe <coughs> but man thanks for watching again y'all again uh, go see Wolverine I think I summed up how it ends right yeah they Wolverine dies she buries him it's a dope scene where he throw up the eggs she throw up the eggs for him on a little grave site they walk up to the wind and that's it there is a, um, supposedly, if I had to guess, there is, in the comics, there's a Canadian superhero group. I think it's called Alpha Flight. Hold on, let me look. I got to get this right. Uh, um. Tired of balling, yeah. Only selling work to them workaholics. Got guns.